Hi everyone, this is Gleb Bakhmatov. Recently a user has asked a question on our Gitter channel complaining that there is a problem using literal regular expression versus object regular expression. Luckily, the user has provided a reproduction, which is the best thing you can ask from a user. Anytime you have a Cypress problem, you really should provide a reproducible example so we can debug it. Anyway, I looked at the example, I cloned the repo and I thought it's an excellent example to learn from. So let's look at this repository. First of all, notice that the user has not provided package JSON, they provide package log. So we cannot even install things. So let's quickly initialize a new package JSON and let's install Cypress. Now that Cypress 6.6 .6 is installed, let's look at the code. I'll open my VS Code editor and I can look at the test. So we, before each test, we're visiting the site. Our first test gets a meta description from the page and then compares its content with the description. So what's the description? It's coming from a fixture and the fixture says the description is oh. So this is a regular expression. Notice the dollar sign at the end and a hat or whatever that thing is at the front. So it's not just the text, it's a regular expression. So this test probably doesn't work because I'm sure our description doesn't have the dollar sign at the end. So we cannot just compare the value of the attribute. In this test we're constructing a regular expression from of a picture that we have loaded and then we're comparing the attribute and its content to that regular expression. But we cannot just compare the values. We have to say match, right? We want to make sure that the content matches the regular expression. So this looks like the right kind of test that should pass. And this is just hard-coded test. The user says they don't want to do that. They don't want to hard code the regular expression. They want to really load it from the fixture file. So let's look at this test. Does it really fail? So I will open Cypress. Okay, it's running, it's loading the site. Because we didn't set the base URL, it has to reload it again on the first visit. And we can see the page, we can see the test is passing. So the user is complaining about something that's actually passing. Notice this getter. Right, we from we're getting the head, and when we find the meta element with the attribute name equals the description, uh, does this really work? What does it get? Uh, you can always double check by grabbing this selector, open, opening the DevTools, switching to the iframe right of the site, and then doing the dollar sign, which is really query element. So we do find the meta. Right, and the matter has the content. So this is the text we want to assert. The interesting thing about this is the following. We don't have to be that explicit, right? We don't have to use then and just to write an assertion, right? We can write the same test in a different way. So let me remove only, I'll say match. So once we get this element, right, this yields a jQuery element. Then we can just say should have attribute and what attribute we're we looking for? Description. Actually no, content. Content, sorry. Right. So this will yield us the actual attribute. Right? Content. In this case it will be some text. And now we want to make sure that it actually matches this regular expression. So I can use should and I'll say add you know, some string from the content and then we can say expression and expect s to match regular expression. Right? So this is equivalent test and I should probably check my syntax. Yeah, we don't need it. Perfect. Still passes. So now we use uh, an implicit assertion, right? Now I want to simplify this expression, right? So we're constructing a regular expression from the fixture. Hmm. 
and we're constructing here, but if we're always going to construct a real expression from this picture, we might construct it when we load it. Right? Let me show how it's done. So this example loads this field. Okay. So instead of loading like this, we can say load the picture, description. Right. So inside this picture, we're getting the property description. Right will give us a string. Then we can take this string and we can construct new regular expression using the string as an argument. Now this gives us a regular expression and then we can save it as let's say description or oh, like desk uh, reg. Okay so we're going to load this picture file which gives us a JSON object. We're grabbing its description property, we construct a new expression and saving it as a property, just like we did before. So in this case, when we arrive here, well, we already have this regular expression. We can just say this description regular expression, what we saved right here. Okay, let's close. Okay, undefined. Let's take a look. It's description, then regular expression. What is it? We have content undefined. Will we? I modified the wrong. When this happens, I usually just restart the browser. Perfect. The test runs as before. So what we have done, as soon as we loaded the picture, we constructed a regular expression and then used it to confirm our attribute. Well, we can go one step beyond. Okay. So first of all, let me get all the way right here. You do not need a new keyword in front of regular expression. Regular expression method or constructor function is smart enough to notice that if it's not inside an object, if it wasn't called with a new keyword, you can avoid it. And then regular expression constructor will call itself using a new keyword. So this runs the same way as before. Now, notice that we're taking this parameter and calling the constructor function, just passing the parameter, so we can use point free programming because we just want to call this constructor on whatever was passed from the previous call. Okay, so this works like before. So that's already useful. And if we have a regular expression that looks like this, then we don't need to actually pass it here, right? We can directly say, just like before, should have attribute content and the assertion have attribute changes the subject. So it yields the text and, but, and this text then should match, right? So just this assertion and we already have the regular expression. So we can do this. Perfect. So this is what we've done. We constructed the regular expression, saved it as a property. Right, by giving it an alias in before each and then using the function keyword, we made the context, this object, available. And every alias is a property on that context. So now we have this regular expression inside this function. We grabbed the attribute value and we used match and existing regular expression. So this is the simplest way you can use regular expression to assert a strange property in your page.